motivated us to be all that God is calling us to be. Amen. There's no shortness in God. He called us out to call us in. And we are grateful for you this morning. So we want to go to our scripture reading. We want to pray and ask God's blessing upon us. <clears throat> we want to pray and ask God to look on us. You know, we've had, since we met last time, one of our dear mothers have gone to be with the Lord. Amen. Mother Lee Artis Bright, bless her heart. And Sister Delane, if you're watching, God bless you. We're praying for you guys and your family. Yeah. And y'all know one thing? God bless Mother Lee Artis to live a Christian life. And this woman lived to be, nine, was it 94? Amen. 94 years old. She was still cold in her right mind. She was able to do a little bit for herself, and that's a blessing within yes, herself. Yes, yeah, yeah, so we were able to go by to see her. Last time we went by to see her, I guess a few weeks ago, we sat down there and had prayer with them, had a little church with them. And it, it's just a wonderful thing. When the scripture said, blessed are they that die in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So bless her heart. And we are praying for the bright family. And God will strengthen you. So let us go to the throne of grace. I know there are those of you that may have situations in your life. And God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or ask. Amen. 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 According to the power of faith that's at work within us. So let's go to the throne. Father, in the name of Jesus again, we are grateful that you call us sons. You call us daughters in your kingdom. We thank you, Father, for sending your son Jesus to give himself as a sacrifice for our sins. That we can no longer let the enemy hold us hostage and incriminate us and hold us bound. But we can come boldly to the throne of grace. So we can find grace in the time of need. Thank you for another opportunity to assemble ourselves here. And those that are watching virtually, thank you for giving them that will to join in with us this morning. And Lord, we're praying in the name of Jesus that just as we are grateful for what you're doing in our lives. We still are mindful of those that are suffering, those that are struggling. And we pray this morning that you will look on your people. We pray, Father, that you will look on Syria and Turkey that have been struck by a devastating earthquake. Many have lost their lives. And, but even in the midst of all that have lost their lives, they're still finding somebody. Through your miraculous power, with all of the rubble, they're reaching in and pulling out the babies pulling out a teenager, pulling out those that are still surviving all of that tragedy. Lord, look on those. Our heart breaks when we look at the news and see the devastation, but we're asking you to look on those families, that you will continue to mend their hearts. You will continue to comfort them who have experienced such a great loss. And Father, there are some among us that are sick in their bodies still. We are praying and believing you that you are looking on Miss Jeannie, that you are touching her body. You're going to raise her up in the name of Jesus. We believe in you, Father, that Miss Marisol, they're going to hear from you and you're, you're going to touch them. And they are going to have a new lease on life. We are praying and believe in you, Father, because if anybody can do it, our God can. We know that you are able. You are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or ask. We pray for Miss Dahlia and Brother Vincent down there in Tampa who lost their baby and daughter. We know that you are able to comfort them even now. Continue to comfort them. Let them sense your presence even as they walk through this valley. Let them experience your presence. Look on Sister Atkins and all of them that have endured this uh, calamity. Continue to heal their hurts. Continue to lift their burdens. Continue, Father, to move in such a way that they cannot deny that this is the Lord moving in our heart to comfort us and to give us peace and courage to walk on by faith. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Then we pray for Brother Moses Wilcox there in Georgia that you will continue to strengthen him, continue to help him in the name of Jesus. Let his faith not fail him now, but let him continue to hold to God's unchanging hand. We pray for our uh, Tamika and Tanum, Tamika, Tamika, and Tatu, that one too, both of them, that you will continue to touch their bodies, 
heal them, Lord, and they'll be able to get back in church and worship you again in the beauty of your holiness. We pray for our brother, Lord. We pray for Brother Anthony and Brother Anthony. Yeah, all both of those Anthony's, our friends. We pray for them, God, and their faith will not fail, but they'll continue to reach for you. Because you promised you would be our help. You would be our strength. You said we can call on you and you will hear us. So I pray, Father, that you will help them to continue to call on your name. Knowing that as your scripture declares, when we call on your name, you will answer us. And there are others, Lord, that you've healed and you've touched their body. Thank you for touching my cousin, uh, Nellie, who they're in uh, Portsmouth, Virginia. You raised her up. She went through the cancer and God blessed her. She came back out and she says, I'm healed. I'm cancer free. Hallelujah. Thank you for answering prayer. Thank you for answering prayer, Lord. Thank you for them. Thank you for them. Thank you for Miss Marlene and her family there in Philadelphia that you continue to touch in their bodies. We praise your Father that you continue to be looking on those that are sick, those that have lost loved ones, even here among us in Florida. Continue to touch those. Comfort them, Lord. Heal and lift that burden that they may continue to press forward and do all that you're calling them to do. Look on First Lady Ted Washington's wife. Look on her, Lord. Continue to help her through this time. Unexpectedly lost. Continue to strengthen her. Continue to heal the hurts. Remember the Chandersing family as they continue to walk through it. Every anniversary, I'm sure that they are reminded of the loss. But God, continue to walk with them through this. Heal their hurts and cause them to be able to say, look what the Lord has done. Have your way, Father. Have your way, Lord. Father, even among us here, there may be situations here among us that they are, may, may not be feeling well in their body. They are believing you for healing. We know that you are able. We ask you to heal. Let your hands of mercy flow. Let forgiveness flow. Let your love flow in the name of Jesus. Continue to save. We pray for those that are not saved, those that are struggling in their faith, those that have failed and failed miserably, and others have looked at them and counted them out. We pray for them that you would touch them and say, Get up, rise up, just as you rose, you, you caused Lazarus to be risen from the dead, cause this one to be risen up from the dead. Whatever they've done, don't let them. Clothed in it, have a pity party, but Lord, touch them that they'll rise up and accept your forgiveness and be made whole again. I pray for Brother Paul that you would touch his body, touch him, Lord. Don't let the enemy beat him up and make him think he can't come back up, but touch his body, forgive him, and let him experience the peace and joy of the Lord again. Father, we pray for these that are here, that your hand of mercy and grace will continue to be upon our lives, that we will continue to walk in faith and believe your word. Your word said we are healed. Your word said we are free. Your word said we are saved. We have victory. And let us walk it out, that we might experience the true victory in Jesus. Now I pray as we begin to share your word today, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. I pray that you will touch every listening ear today. Those that are in Jacksonville, the Harris family, touch them and cause them to hear your word. Open up our hearts and ears that we might hear the word today. And we'll make a, we'll choose to change so that we can, con we can transform to your image, your ways of love, your ways of honoring each other, and walking in a way that brings glory to your name. Give you glory and honor for it today. In Jesus' name, we all say amen. 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 God bless you. I'm going to call your attention to a couple of scriptures. Our base scripture I'm going to call your attention to is Ephesians. I'm going to call your attention to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. You know, happy uh, Valentine's Day to all of our, mm -hmm. well, all of y'all. Happy.
after Valentine's Day today. After Valentine's Day. And I'm sure that your significant other is treating you very special. Got something in store for you, and uh, that's what we do. Amen? Amen? So I'm going to Ephesians chapter 5. And uh, y'all keep me in your prayers. I tell you, I hit my eye the other day, and I got a little, like I got, I don't know if I scarred the cornea or what, but I got to probably go get that checked. Anyway, we're going to press on. Somebody say, press on, Pastor. Press on, Pastor. So we're looking at, starting at the first verse, and I'm going to read a little bit, a little read on. That's what my pastor used to do, do a little read on. Start out by saying, I'm in the King James Version, Ephesians chapter 5, starting at verse 1. Be you therefore followers of God as dear children. Y'all see that? Amen. Be followers, Paul said, be followers of God as dear children. It says arrogant, high-minded, and cocky. He said, but as what? Dear, Dear children. children. Y'all know how children are. They are very humble. And a lot of times they may offend each other, but give them two minutes and they go back and make up. The only time that's different is when you and I that's start right. talking to them. That's right. And putting our old stupidity in their head. But other than that, they are born to just gravitate and fellowship and love on each other and pray together. Yeah. So he said, be there for followers of God as dear children, and walk in love. Somebody say, in love. In love. As Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Three, fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Five, for this you know, that no whoremonger, no unclean person, a covetous man who is an idolater, have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Six, and let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Seven, be not you therefore partakers with them. You all understand that, right? Mm -hmm. Let no man deceive you with vain words because of these cometh the wrath of God. So when we participate with people, just talking fraudly and vain words. He said, verse eight, for here we go. For you were sometimes darkness, but now are you light. In the Lord, walk as children of light. In other words, the, Jesus told us when he, before he left, he said, now you are the light of the world, didn't you? Amen. Y'all remember? Amen. He said, let your light shine in the dark world so others in the world can see Christ in your life. Mm -hmm. That's what greater faith do here, right? Y'all been letting your light shine? Yeah. Or y'all been putting it under the bush you're trying to hide because you didn't want people to realize that you're supposed to be a Christian and you're doing stupid stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's let our light shine, right? He goes on to say, For well, you were sometime in darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Verse 9. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable to the Lord. And then he said, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. He said, well, Jesus hung out with public and sinners, but he wasn't fellowshipping with what they were doing. Oh, yeah. He was fellowshipping with them, hoping they would see his light, that there was a difference. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we have to show the difference even in love. We have to do it in love. Verse, uh, what verse am I? 12. Verse 12 says, For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whosoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Y'all hear that? Redeeming the time, making good of our time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be you not unwise, but understanding what the will of God is, the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein in excess, but be filled with the Spirit instead. Mm -hmm. 
speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always, somebody say always, always. for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. 21, here are my verses I will be focusing on. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Submitting. Y'all don't like that word, do it? <laughs> Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives. Y'all see that, 22? Y'all probably hate this verse even worse. Wives. <laughs> Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Now, y'all got to catch this. It said, to your own husband. I put a caveat there. Why submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord? But notice he said earlier, he said, submit yourself to one another. So Lord, wives, don't think we're being partial. Paul said first, he said, submitting yourselves to one another in the fear of the Lord. And now he's being a little more specific when he says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. Can I explain that? Can I, can I explain that real briefly? There, there, there are times when, you know, I, we've been preaching here for a while and we've been preaching for a little while. And there were times when I would see people coming and they'd be bringing, oh, Pastor, I made such a good old whatever, cake or a good old pie. And here is one and I bought this for you. First thing I asked them, I said, did you bake one for your husband? <laughs> Come on now. Don't be bringing me stuff you're not taking care of your husband. Until I, say, I bought this for you. No, you go take care of home first. That's right, that's right. Then, if you want to bring me up slice or something, I'll accept it. But don't be talking about you get it for me. And you're not taking care of home. Call me. Right. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. I just say that. Okay, what, what verse I'm going? 23. 23. So here we go. For the husband is the head of the wife. Oh, some of y'all might not like this either. <laughs> Even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Y'all see that? So husband, don't y'all get too happy now, because that's some that's a requirement that says husband, you're supposed to be doing. Sometimes you get happy over that part, but are we doing and living up to that? That's the question, isn't it? 24 says, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be unto their own husbands in everything. And we're going to break that down a little bit. It says, husbands, love your wives. That's 25, isn't it? Y'all see that? Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot on wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Hmm, okay. So are men to love their wives, you say it again, as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Mm -hmm. No man ever yet hated his own flesh, okay. but nourishes and cherishes it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body. We are members of Christ's body. Of his, <clears throat> of his flesh and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh. That means come together and work together. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and not the church. Nevertheless, then to some our conclusion verse, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. God bless the reading of the word. Y'all may be seated and may the word be sanctified in our hearts. And I want, want us to do our vow of confession. You know, we have a vow of confession that we do every Sunday when we, when we minister the word. And this is uh, not something that I just picked off off the street. This is biblical, and I believe it's applicable as we prepare to uh, <clears throat> talk about some of this. Let's do our Bible confession together. Y'all ready? Yes. Yeah. Someone out, hand out if you have one. <clears throat> Let's say it in unison. Oh, awake, oh, awake, oh, and arise, oh my soul. I'm about to receive the all-powerful, ever-living, life-changing, 
seed of the word of Almighty God. I boldly confess my mind is alert and my heart is receptive to receive and by faith pursue God's will for my life. His word renews and transforms my mind. His word illuminates my path and causes me to see through the lens of God my Father. And by faith, I am everything he says I am. And I can do everything he says I can do. And by faith, I am saved. I am an overcomer and victorious in this life and throughout eternity. I will never be the same. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And the only way you will never be the same is if you take this word and you hear it and you just push it to the side. You and I take this word that God has given us and you begin to pray and ask God to help you to apply it to your life on a daily basis. Somebody said daily basis. Daily. Daily basis. Our life will be changed and we will continue to be changed and transformed. Because see, some people think, you know, I, I, I did a son's prayer and I, I, got, I gave my heart to the Lord years ago. And after they did that, they did nothing else. <laughs> How many of you know you can accept Christ in your life or go through, or repeat the sinner's prayer and still not be transforming? Amen. See, God wants us to be in the transformation process. That means <clears throat> after getting born again, I hear the word. <clears throat> and as I hear the word, I start letting the word help me to modify my life so that I can reflect what God wants. Y'all hear me? God don't, you know, he'll save me dirty. <coughs> Y'all catch this now. He'll save me dirty. Okay. Yeah. But he wants me to clean up Amen. after that. Right. Or else I'll look just like the world still. Okay. And I'll be walking around talking about I'm a saint and I'm a Christian and living like the devil. And the Lord said, no, you're doing what Psalms 1. I told you not to do in Psalms 1. He said, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly people. Now standeth in the way of sinners, now sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And if I'm saying I'm a Christian and I'm living a crazy kind of life and looking like the world, first of all, my light is not shining good. Right. And he done told me, let my light shine. So that men in darkness can see the light and they'll be drawn to the Lord, right? Yeah. But if I'm still walking <laughs> in darkness and I'm telling everybody I'm a Christian, well, first of all, I'm probably not going to be telling anybody that. <laughs> Because I'm going to realize and I'm going to have that spiritual conviction that I'm not living the way God wants me to live. And a lot of times, when I have an opportunity to make a difference, I'll be quiet. Because the first thing the enemy is going to tell you, what you're going to tell them, you're doing the same thing they're doing. They're not going to believe you. And you know what? They're probably right. Because today, people believe what we do more than what we say. Even our children live that way. Mm -hmm. Tell your children, don't do that now. You mind they smoking the weed. Don't you smoke that now. That bad for you. <laughs> and the child may listen to you for the first five years of their life, maybe the first ten years. But after a while, they're going to hear somebody say, it's not that bad. And they're going to see you doing it. And guess what they're going to do? Mm -hmm. Around on the school campus, they're going to be hiding in the bathroom, trying to smoke that weed. Go, I saw my parents, they say it was bad, but it must not be that bad because they're smoking. I saw my daddy, he tell me to be respectful to the little ladies, but I hear my daddy cussing at my mama and hitting the side of the head. So guess what they're going to do when they start dating? They're going to start doing the same thing. Why? Because that's what they saw, and that's their contextual environment that they grew up in. So guess what? You can tell them not to do it all you want to. They're going to start doing what they saw mommy and daddy do, because they'll assume that's normal behavior in relationships. Amen. Yeah, I'm going there. <laughs> they say, that's normal behavior, brother. Oh, daddy, he'd he come back and bring her flowers after he done hit side the head and they, they make up. Is that the kind of relationship you want to have? No. I don't think so. I wouldn't want my daughters having that kind of relationship. I don't care how much money he's got, how handsome he is, six foot two or five foot one, I don't matter. I wouldn't want my daughters to have that kind of relationship. And guess what? I've instructed them on what to watch out for. Right. So, yeah, don't you can blame it on them. But no, blame it on their daddy. The daddy told them what to watch out for. And that's what real men are supposed to do. Amen? Amen. 
Yeah, yeah. So let's look at this a little bit. Oh, wow. Yeah, this, this is Valentine's Day now. Y'all say, I want to know what love is. We're going to show you. Come here, my darling. No, no, this is Amanda. Amanda, come down, baby. My Amanda. I got something for my Amanda. Happy Valentine's Day to you. Thank you. I love you, my oh, baby. No. Until you get a Boaz that's going to give you a card for Valentine's Day. I am your Boaz. Oh, that's right. I got you. Let's have a minister of Amen. Yeah, that's my baby right there. She's good. Thank God for her. And my darling sugar, where your arms? Come here, baby. Give me, All right. Give you my, my, my. If I could skip us. <laughs> I got a special card for you. I went through a lot of cards trying to find the right one. Because I'm trying to make sure that it says basically the sentiments of what I'm trying to say. So I went through that place and I just went all through that little rack looking for the card. And you. I found a card for my children. So this card is for you. You know I like cars, but I won't read what it says. <laughs> I, won't do, I won't do like my daddy said. Y'all be swapping spit. I ain't gonna do that. Right <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it later. <laughs> 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 now, brother, <laughs> normally I don't look forward to. Normally I try not to. Try not to I try not to uh, <laughs> make too much of display about my family when I'm up here. But I just felt like this Valentine's Day, and I'm going to be talking about love, so I'm trying to set an example. That's right. That's right. That's right. And, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't just set the example when I'm at church, but I try to do it, live it at home so that not only my wife will understand, but the children will understand what love really is. Mm -hmm. And thank God, I preface this message here, <clears throat> I'm going to say, what's love got to do with it? Okay. And I want to preface this by saying, listen. I'm grateful for my mom and dad. They're gone now. They live a life together, married 50 something years, I guess almost 60 years. And I never seen my daddy hit my mama, never seen him just raise and argue with her back and forth. I didn't <coughs> see that, thank God. But for those of you that have seen that, maybe some of you here may have lived through that. And those that are watching, listen, that's okay. Because a lot of times when that happened, no, that wasn't okay for them to do that. Don't get me wrong. Don't get it twisted. But I'm saying if you experience that, it's not too late that you can get start from here and start doing it the right way. Yeah. And I want to share some teaching with you this morning that hopefully will help us. If we have a good relationship, we can keep it going. And if you're struggling in some kind of relationship, hopefully some of these tips will help you to do things a little bit better. Amen. And for those of you that don't have a relationship yet, I know a few people, at least a, at least a, at least a no couple. <laughs> well, I just pray. Y'all stretch forth your hands and just pray for them, Pastor. Because <laughs> sometimes, somebody say sometimes, sometimes, some of us really don't know. They get comfortable being in our own little zone and we're not looking for nothing. We're not expecting nothing. But for those that are, God is faithful. All right? Amen. So I'm going to go through this, and uh, I'm going to probably have to make a series out of it because i got a lot to say here. So those of you that are watching and those of you that are here, again, call your friends. Pastor going to give you some free tips on relationships today, and I'm not going to charge you all for it. All right? I'm not going to charge you. But, but you can go to the Zoom. Go to the link on the page now. You can always send in a donation for the church. And I'll appreciate that. But you got a lot of work to do. So again, <clears throat> call your friends and tell them your favorite pastor's got some tips for relationships. This is Valentine's Day in a couple of days, right? Yeah. And we want to share a little bit with you. So again, happy Valentine's Day to all of you that are here and those of you that are watching. I want to share a few tips. And watch this. Some of you maybe already have a relationship, and I hope it's a good relationship. But for those of you that are still waiting for your Boaz or waiting for Boazette, Boazette, Boazetta, <laughs> I want you to trust God, and I got a few tips for you first, okay? Because sometimes you can grow weary and tired doing the right thing. Do you all really believe that? You can be doing the right thing and get tired of doing the right thing. Amen. Especially when you're expecting a, a certain result within a certain length of time. 
you can grow weary doing the right thing. So watch this then. I don't want you to grow weary. So here's a few words for you. Don't stop believing God. Don't stop believing God. And I know the enemy going to, he'll murky the waters up and make things all fuzzy. And sometimes he'll make it think, oh, wow, this part is not going to ever happen to me. But listen, don't stop believing God for your breakthrough. We can tell when someone stops believing. You know what happens? Their attitude and their countenance change. It doesn't matter what you believe in for. You can be believing God to get mad. You can be believing God to start a new career or do a new job or whatever you believe in. Get rid of a habit that you've got that's not good. And if it's taking a long time, sometimes, somebody say sometimes. 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 People kind of settle. They kind of, kind of give up on it, thinking that, well, maybe this is not going to happen for me. But don't stop believing God. Listen. Wow. We can tell again when someone stops believing. Their attitude and their countenance change. They may serve, <laughs> but you can tell they're not serving in a good place. Because bitterness, short temperedness, spawns out of their mouth. And you're like, what? 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 Why did they respond like that? Anybody ever seen people do that? They can be upset with somebody else. But you just have to be the first one that comes into their path, so they let their venom off on you. And you had nothing to do with it. Anybody ever seen that happen? Some of us may have played that role. But listen, let's make sure that we continue to believe God, because when I continue to believe God, certain things are going to happen. Watch this. Again, they may serve, but bitterness is spewing out. They are short-fused, impatient sometimes, and very snappy. And even if they don't say a word on their face, it shows that I'm unhappy. I'm in a bad place. So don't mess with me. You know what I do when I'm in a bad place? When I don't feel like being out and, and, and intermingling? If I got to go and intermingle or go and interact with other people, I ask God to help me. But you know, the flesh is the flesh. Y'all realize that? I mean, you know, any given day, your flesh can say, I don't want to play this game today. <laughs> any given day. And some of us go along with the flesh. Okay, well, I just go along. I don't feel it either. Flesh, so we just go along. And we make a mockery of the kingdom because flesh don't want to play today. That's right, that's right. But you know how to, how to avoid that? That's why God gives us his Holy Spirit. When I don't feel like it, I call for my helper to kick in. Lord, I need you today. I got to do this, this, and this, and I don't feel up to it or whatever's going on. And I need the spirit of God to really show up because I don't want James to show up. Anybody ever did that? And it's okay. There's no, it's no shame in that. Let's be honest with God and transparent with God, and God's going to be transparent with you. But if I pretend I'm all that, I know I'm not at my best today. I know I, me and my wife didn't get along or something happened yesterday with the kids or whatever happened. And I know I'm not in a good frame of mind and I'm going to go out there and try to wing it. The devil will make sure it goes wrong. It'll go south so fast and then I really got to repent now. Brother, because I come back home all guilty. Oh man, I sure made a fool of myself. Lord forgive me. Lord, I mean, when all I had to do was say, Father, this is not... I don't feel up to it today. I need the Holy Spirit to help me. Yes. Yes. The Bible says he's a present help. Right. Even when you're in trouble. That's right. That's right. That's right. And all you got to do is call on him, brother, and ask him to help us. Jesus. Sometimes we can be tired. Sometimes we can be frustrated. Anything can go wrong to just kind of disrupt our day. Let's not pretend that I got it all together and, right. and I'm going to do it all because I'm a man and I'm strong and all of that. Let's just be honest with God. Amen. amen. Sisters ought to say amen too. Amen. <laughs> Don't y'all get vulnerable sometimes to feel weak? Oh, yeah. Don't feel like you're capable of doing what you're supposed to be doing today? It happens to all of us. Yeah. Doesn't it happen, brother? Yeah. It happens to all of us. Caleb, doesn't it happen sometimes? Don't feel like getting up. <laughs> Think about, well, I don't go to work. I don't get paid. Well, that's a motivator sometimes. <laughs> But if I'm going to go to work with a bad attitude, that doesn't do God any service. I hadn't did God any service, right? 
So when I'm having a bad day, just talk to the Lord. Father, I'm about to go and interact. I need to take care of business. I need you to help me, Holy Spirit. Show up and help me that I'll represent the kingdom well. That's what God expects us to do. I don't care if I'm sick. He wants me to represent the kingdom well. You know, you can be sick and still represent well. Amen. Y'all hear me? Amen. That's no excuse. I can be tired and having a headache and all kinds of stuff going on with me, but I can still represent the kingdom well. And as a result, sometimes people will get saved. Sometimes people will walk away saying, wow, they were such a nice person to me. I want to go to their church. I want to go visit them because I see how nice they were. And the Bible says, with love and kindness, have I drawn you? Mm -hmm. Well, he expects us to draw people with that same love and kindness. He don't want to see my bad side and me an arrogant, uh, my high-mindedness. They want to see a, a good, humble, kind, affectionate kind of person that is expressing the love of God. And we can do it on a daily basis. basis. Yeah. What about this? So, ladies and gentlemen, why y'all are waiting... What about a few tips? Stay in faith and honor God daily. What does that look like? Honor God means to continue to trust him as you discipline yourself and honor him with your life and your lifestyle. Yes. Honor God daily. Don't talk about I'm waiting on the Lord to bless you, but you're still living like a fool and doing whatever you want to do. You're not waiting on God. You're trying to make your own thing happen. And then the Christian, non-Christian looking at you say, well, I thought they were Christians. I see them all over, over there, hopping over there on the club. I see them out there shacking up and doing all kinds of stuff. Listen, that does not honor God, does it? No. Y'all talk to me now. No. I know the plows are in a little deep today, but I'm just trying to give you a few good tips. Right. If I'm going to say I'm waiting on God, then I need to surrender and use discipline and wait on God. Yes. Y'all think God is able? Amen. Yes. Yes. According to the word, he's able. And I, I'm a living witness that when you surrender to God and let God fix it, God works it out. Amen. Hallelujah. I got one amen there. Amen. All right. So stay in faith and honor God. Again, to honor God means to continue to trust him as you discipline yourself and honor him with your life and your lifestyle. Number two, continue to be grateful. A lot of times people can be in a bad place and they're not where they want to be yet. And they're not grateful. How do how you know they're not grateful, Pastor? When you do stuff, they hardly ever even say thank you. And not only that, watch this. Let me, let me just stick to my script so I won't get all. <laughs> <laughs> when we're grateful, not only do we express our gratitude to others, but we live our life in a grateful and appreciative way. Okay. What does that mean? I'm not being complaining and whining about my situation every time you get in somebody's company. How you doing? Yeah, it'd be better if I had so and so and so. It'd be better if so and so. Well, it could be worse too, couldn't it? Life don't have to be kind to you every day. Y'all hear me? But listen, let's have that uh, that, that gratefulness. <laughs> I got a spirit of gratitude. And I'm still excited about the future. I'm not living a doom and gloom life every day. Every time you see me, I've got a sad story. By the time I walk away from you, I'm so depressed. I feel like I need to get a drink. <laughs> I don't drink. I don't. <laughs> but sometimes people can do that. It's a wait. You sit down and talk for them 10 minutes, and by the time you leave, you be like, oh, my Lord. You feel, I feel good. What happened? They done dumped all that on you. Mm. Now you struggling. So, so let's stay in faith and honor God. Amen? Amen. Here's another one. Continue to be grateful. I just said that there. Don't live in a, in a grudgingly and a murmuring kind of atmosphere. When one is grateful, there is a grace that says, I am not where I want to be, but I choose to live my life in a good way anyway. I choose to watch God help me. God has not, look, watch this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Remember, God was not pleased with the Israelites when he brought them out of Egypt. And a lot of them just died in the wilderness. Right. Why? Because well, they were murmuring. They were grumbling. They were complaining about their situation. Even though God had showed them miracles before, how he brought them out. And they get out there, and just because they were not fully uh, satisfied with their situation, they start murmuring and grumbling so much, even against Moses. 
And God brought, sent him to go help deliver them. You know, sometimes the very people that you help, they'll turn when they, when they think that you're not doing what you're supposed to do. They turn on you. The very ones that you help, you know, went out of your way, bent over back with the help. Anybody ever did that? Oh, yeah. Keep on living if you haven't seen it. The very one that you went out of your way and helped and did all kinds of stuff. You don't please them every day. After a while, they get down the road, they, they act like they never, you hadn't done nothing for them. And that's the way they treated God and Moses. They just start murmuring and grumbling. I should have just stayed back. You should have just left us wherever you were in slavery. And they're saying stuff like that. And sometimes, somebody say sometimes. Oh, As Christians, if we're not careful, we can end up giving, having that kind of same little pity party. You know what? I got saved, and I was expecting God to do this, this, and this by now, and it still hadn't happened. And then we can have a sour face. And God has got all kinds of ways of blessing you, all kinds of ways of putting people in your life. And if you're not careful, you shut the door on your own blessing. By being negative, being critical, by complaining. Y'all hear me? Amen. So let's not shut the door on our own blessing. Watch this. Okay, I'm moving on. I'm moving on. So I say, move on, Pastor. Move on, Pastor. All right, watch this now. When we are content, what does it mean to be content? Y'all do want to know, right? Mm -hmm. Content does not mean that I'm just going to settle. I don't think my life is going to change. I'm just going to settle. Content don't mean that. So what does content mean? I'm going to tell you. Content does mean, listen, settling is giving up and losing hope. An example of settling, again, is, uh, is after being virtuous, you start living carelessly and irresponsible. I was trying to live and wait for the Lord, and I don't know that God won't bless me, so I just kind of settle. I start dating people that I know is not good for me. I'll start hanging around with people that I know is not really good for me. It's not a, a good display of my Christian character. And I start hanging around those kind of people. That's a sign of settling. Somebody say settling. Settling. So I can be content and not settle. Let me show you what that looks like. I am being, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though I'm content, like Paul said, I've learned in whatever state I'm in, there will be content. And let me show you what it, what it looks like. Being content is when we realize this is not where I desire to be, but while in the situation, I'm still being my very best. I'm serving others. I'm giving. I'm sharing with a positive attitude and constantly striving to make improvements on myself. Because listen, if you're praying and asking God for something, say if you're praying for God to send you the right kind of person, listen, sometimes, when I say sometimes, sometimes. God hadn't answered it yet because, listen, he expects something out of you just like he's trying to prepare the right person for you. Uh oh y'all missed it. Okay. okay. I said he's expecting something out of you. Listen, when I was looking for my wife and I got to the place where I'm not going to be trying to find her. I'm like, Lord, this is too hard. Good women, but I didn't think they were fitting for what God was calling me to do. So I'm just like, okay, dating for a couple of months. No, this is not, this is not right. So the thing is, I decided, well, I'm just going to wait on the Lord. Stop calling them. Stop writing. Stop letting them hang out with me. I'm not going to hang out because I keep hanging around here. As we both in the flesh, we get into something that we don't supposed to be getting into, right? So I stopped doing all of that. And I'm like, well, Lord, if you don't have nobody for me, I'll just be a single bachelor the rest of my life. And that was not what I really wanted to do. I saw my mom and dad have a good relationship, and I prayed and asked God to give me a good wife to walk this journey with me, just like my parents had. So, but the, the, to, to be content don't mean I'm going to settle and start doing stupid stuff. To be content simply means I'm going to work on myself. I'm going to start serving other people. I would go to this old lady house and cut wood for her. Somebody don't know what cutting wood is. I'd cut wood for her and bring it in there and make a fire for her. I would go out there and get her eggs or go to the store and I'd just start serving, man. At my church, I'd just give him my little tithe and little I was having. I'd just give him my tithe and supporting whatever I needed to do. I'm serving others because that serving, some kind of way, takes the mind off of you mm -hmm. and shifts it on the, what you're doing, right? 
And I just kept serving. I kept giving. I kept doing stuff. I'm like, you know what? I can go back to school and, and, and learn some stuff. I went back to school and learned a few trades and learned how to do this and learned how to do that while I'm waiting. That's called being content. Because I'm not just all frustrated and cussing everybody out because I'm not where I need to be and being all arrogant. No, I just settled my little self down and kept serving and doing my best and working on James. Because guess what? You be looking for a certain kind of person, but just like you looking for a certain kind of person, they're looking for a certain kind of person too. And sometimes, somebody say sometimes, sometimes. God, it's not God's fault. I'm not working on myself. It's not God's fault that the person he's got for me, they're not working on themselves because what's supposed to happen. I'm supposed to be listening and obeying God, walking in obedience to him, right? And the person he's got for me is supposed to be listening to God and doing what God is ordering them to do, what it means go back to school, what if I'm either gaining weight, if I'm overweight, or what do I need to do? I need to go and work on myself. If I got emotional trauma, I ought to be going to some counselor or going to my pastor and getting some help because I don't want to carry that into the relationship. That makes sense? Because now I'm not my best self for them and certainly they won't be their best self for me because what if they got trauma? Now you got... <laughs> Y'all better help me now. Now you got two people fighting each other because both of them did not completely work on themselves to get in a good place where they can be of value to the relationship. Does that make sense? Y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, while I'm waiting and being content, I can spend time giving and serving and working on James. Somebody said, work on myself. Work on myself. Kurt Francis said, we're not all that and a bag of chips. <laughs> Sometimes we think we are. Until we get in a relationship with somebody else. And one thing while you're doing when you're being content, listen, you're willing to listen to criticism. Because okay. I mean, you know, sometimes your friends will tell you the truth if they're a real friend. Y'all hear me? Anybody ever had a friend to tell you the truth and you got upset with them? <laughs> you sharp patient. You need to change that. No, I'm not no sharp patient. I need to get all frustrated and angry with them. Well, they told you the truth. You want them to tell you the truth, right? Your parents, parents want the children to tell them the truth. My mom and dad used to always say, tell me the truth. I'd rather you tell me the truth. Whether it hurts or not, tell me the truth. Don't let me have to hear it from somebody else. Mm. Tell me the truth first and we'll work it out, right? But listen, if you're not being truthful and people tell you something about yourself and you're trying to ignore it pretend that's not you, that's not helping you in it, right? It's not helping you in it. If you need to go to the gym or you need to work out or do something and make yourself better and go back to school. Because listen, sometimes we have all of this stuff at our disposal and we won't do it because we're waiting for the right one to come along. One thing my parents always told us, don't wait for, for somebody to come around and meet all your needs. Because listen, you need to start working and doing stuff to meet your own needs. Mm -hmm. Say, so what if they can't cook? At least you know how to cook. What if they don't like to cook? Somebody told them one day this is so true. <laughs> the guy said, I don't, I don't know. This my relationship not going good at all. I'm like, what's wrong? They don't cook. They don't clean. They don't. <laughs> he went down a list of things that they don't do, and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> I don't sound like they didn't properly prepare. So I say, you gotta properly prepare. Yeah. Properly prepare. Yeah, yeah. And while you're being content, watch this. This also may mean assisting others in reaching their goal. I've seen people. Because they're not meeting their goals and their needs aren't being fulfilled yet. I've seen people, they don't even reach out to help anybody else. Mm. That's, that says something about them, doesn't it? Mm. If they're not going to be willing to reach out and help somebody else meet their goals while they're waiting on God to help bring their stuff together, listen, that means, tell you right there, they're not ready. Because in relationship, it causes people working together, right? My wife works with me. I work with her. It's not like we are all independent. You do what you want to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. And I'm not going to help you. No. The Bible said the two shall do what? Become one flesh. That means we start working together. We have the same kind of mindset and trying to help fulfill each other's needs. Right? I know. Right? All right. Okay. What about this one? Not only be content. Oh, wow. 
All right, I'm moving fast. We're going to move on. We'll move on. Somebody say, move on, Pastor. Move on. Move on. Yes, Pastor. So y'all get the gist of it, right? While I'm waiting, I'm going to become my best self. What it mean? Going back to school, seeking the Lord more, praying and letting the Lord help me to get in a better frame of mind. If I need counseling, I'm going to go and seek out some counseling that I can get whatever issues that I haven't dealt with, I can get those issues resolved. So I don't bring them into a new relationship. Does that make sense, folks? Amen. That makes a lot of sense to me. Because if I got unresolved issues, and then who knows? They might have unresolved issues too. Mm -hmm. Now we really got a mess, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we need to work on ourselves. Now, for those of us, I'm going to move on. For those of us that are married, we must remember both of us brought baggage in the relationship too. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear me there on, on the virtue? Y'all hear me? You brought baggage in, your spouse brought some baggage in. Might not have been a whole lot, but all of us brought something into that relationship. Hopefully it was more good stuff than bad. Amen. But watch this. Don't depend on your spouse to change you. A lot of times when I see that a lot, a lot of times the person wants their spouse to change them. And how does that go? Well, if they do such and such, or if they don't do such and such, then I'll be all right. No, 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 no. If you got baggage, don't care how much they change, that's not going to fix you. Amen. That makes sense? Amen. No matter how much the other person change <coughs> and start doing what you like, if I still got some issues that I haven't resolved, they can become an angel. But it still wouldn't fix me. That makes sense to everybody. And I think rather than expecting them to change and fix me, Oh, sure, they probably have some stuff they need to work on, too. But rather than expecting them to do all of the changing and that'll make me well, I need to be working on myself as well. Don't you agree? I need to work on my issues. I need to get, if I need counseling, I need to go to counseling. And listen, sometimes counseling can get hard. Sometimes counseling can get hard because, listen, the closer you get to the issue that people don't want to touch... A lot of times they're ready to get up and leave because I don't want to deal with that now. And that's okay for a minute, but you don't want to ignore the counseling, ignore those issues forever because that means I'll still be in a situation with my relationship and I can jump out of this one and jump in another one. And guess what? If I haven't fixed this stuff, it's going to affect the next relationship. Does that make sense? It's going to affect the next relationship. So what I'm simply saying is sometimes both of us need to work on ourselves or get some help to work on our issues so that we can have a healthy, wholesome relationship. Amen. I've got one amen right there. Good, 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 good. So here we, here we go. Watch this. Don't hold guilt and coercion over your partner's head. This pressure will not give long-lasting results but may drive your partner further away. Here it goes. I'm in a relationship with my wife. But I'm putting all the pressure on her. And you know, you need to stop doing that. And you need to fix that. Because you know, the more you do that, it just hurts me. And sure, it may be setting off triggers with me. But if I'm expecting her to do all of the changing, sis, and I'm not trying to change none, she can change. And I'll still have the same problem. That makes sense? Because I'm expecting her to fix me rather than getting counseling and asking God and praying and asking God to help me to get myself healed so that we can have a wholesome relationship. Because listen, you can't fix your husband, sis. Your husband can't fix you. You can't fix him and he can't fix you. You all agree with that? Amen. We can't fix each other. We can help each other. But we can't fix each other. Only God can bring a total healing and cause us to have a wholesome relationship. But if I'm expecting you to do all of the changing and you're going to fix this, and if you do this, then I'll be all right. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the man in the mirror, the woman in the mirror. Sometimes, somebody say sometimes. Sometimes. Both of us have to play a role in changing. Maybe I need to adjust in certain areas, and maybe they need to adjust in certain areas too, but I should never expect, expect them to do all of the changes, and that's going to satisfy me and make me happy. 
I think God's got it in the script so that we have to depend ultimately on him to bring us peace, to bring us joy, to bring us commitment in the relationship. We have to depend on God some way, don't we? Because we can never fix each other like that. We can't fix each other like that. Certainly, God's got some things in place to help us, but we can never completely fix one another. So listen, uh, each one of you must pray and ask God to show you your part in the situation. Because like that boy said, you know, you talking, point at one, you point one thing at, at somebody else, you got three or four of them point, pointing back at you, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a good analogy that shows us, listen, and they always say, take two to tangle. <laughs> Sure, there may be some problems in my relationship, but watch this. Chances are, it wasn't just caused by one person in the party. Mm. <laughs> it's not just caused by, you didn't just cause the problem. Chances are, you did what you did as a result of what she did. But if you look worse than what you did, look worse than what she did, all of a sudden you're the bad person. You're the bad person. But no, 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 no. Both of us have to commit and acknowledge that I played a role in this. Y'all hear me? Amen. We got to admit that or else we don't go nowhere fast. We just walking, doing that night, going moonwalking, going in the opposite direction. We both have to admit that, listen, I played a part in this. Yeah, yeah. But there's infidelity or trust violated no matter how much your victim spouse does to receive and, ex and assist in your healing. You must depend totally upon God for healing and wholeness. And folks, there can be all kinds of stuff going on in relationships. And if, listen, if there's some brokenness, there's been some mistrust as a result of infidelity or whatever it has been, listen, both of us have to be willing to submit and humble ourselves and work together in order to get wholeness and get the relationship back on track. Does that make sense? Amen. Yeah, yeah, this is good stuff. I hope I got a lot of, lot of wedding people out there listening. And, and those of you that contemplate marriage, I hope I don't scare you. <laughs> but this is good stuff, yeah. If you do this, you're going to be in a better position when you start dating, right? But watch this now. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna wrap up this because I got. I don't want to be long. I just want to be give you some stuff. So when trust is broken, several things have to happen. And a lot of times in relationships, trust is broken. Anybody ever had trust broken in your relationship? It does happen, doesn't it? So here we go. I'm gonna give you, give you a few few uh, tips. First of all, if you're the one that broke the trust, repent and apologize swiftly to your mate and to God. Repent. And apologize swiftly. Don't pretend and wait till they have to find it out. And then all of a sudden all stuff just blows up. No, repent and apologize for it. Humble yourself. Somebody say humble yourself. Humble repent and apologize for it. Then y'all go to God and ask God to help you. Secondly, both must claim their part in causing the breach. Because chances are it wasn't just you. It wasn't just him. It was both of y'all. If you roll the tape back, you'll see where... The breach started. Sometimes we worry about what's happening right now. But most of the time, what's happening now is just symptoms or uh, evidence of what started to happen maybe six months ago, a year ago. And it goes like this. One time we were having date night every week. We were spending time with each other and we were sharing and we were enjoying each other. We had time for each other. All of a sudden, I got too busy. Then you committed the violation. So now I'm pointing all the fingers at you like you're the culprit of the whole thing. Well, you were not the culprit of the whole thing. It was both of us. I got too busy, and I was so busy doing my thing, I didn't have time for you. So all of a sudden something happened. But then I look like I'm the bad person. I'm the worst because, oh, I got caught. Well, you got caught too. You weren't there. You were too busy, and you were, I, oftentimes I try to talk to you, and you so, well, yeah, I get back, let me do this here, let me do this here, and you put everything before your mate. Then when stuff happens, you want to blame your mate totally. Your mate is some of the problem, but it's both of us. 
Somebody ought to say amen. amen. <laughs> but see, that's the part we don't want to admit. We just want to make it look, since you the one got caught, I'll make you look bad. And I'll put you on the carpet. And I'll go and tell everybody how bad you are. Is that right, folks? Y'all shake your head. That's not right, is it? Sister, sister, counsel, that's not right, is it? That's not right. Just because you got caught, I'm going to make you look like you're the worst, the worst person that ever lived. When I had something to do with that. Since if I got something to do with it, I got to admit my part, don't I? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am, Mr. Mr. Army and Lady. <laughs> <laughs> I got to admit my part. And that's where, that's how you can start getting healing. Amen. When both of us admit, listen, yeah, I played a part in that. I remember, yeah, I remember you trying to get me to do something, and I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to participate. I remember that. Now we can start coming together and praying and forgiving, asking each other to forgive us, and we can start the healing process. Yeah. But as long as I don't admit to nothing, and I'm going to blame it all on you, bro, I'm going to keep on limping. Both of us going to keep on limping. Mm -hmm. But we don't have to. Why? Because God, first of all, God loves us, right? He ordained the relationship. He ordained marriage, especially if we went back to the right way. God ordained it. And listen, and he says, I'll help you. Isaiah 41, I think, he was telling, he told the church, he says, listen, I'll help you. I'll uphold you with the righteous right hand. Other, even though you might fail, you might have fallen, I'll catch you and I'll uphold you. And he does the same thing with relationships. Don't y'all think so? Yeah, he does the same thing with relationship. Here we go again. Be transparent with God and with your mate. Even as you cry out to God for help. Be transparent with them. Here's another one. Set boundaries. I don't want to go back and do that again. Set some boundaries. May include counseling. May include setting blocks on my social media. Whoever been calling me. If I've been calling them, I set some blocks on it so I don't have to be... Getting back involved with that. If my phone number, hey, I can put that block, I can block your name off my phone. I don't have to keep answering every time it rains, right? Amen, amen. I'm talking about setting some boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. If you've been on that OnlyFans club. Oh, oh. Don't you look like that? <laughs> 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 Hey, watch this. If you were on that, hey, block it. Get off of it. Off of it. And then right. give your spouse permission that hey, you can check my phone anytime you want anytime. to. Be transparent yeah. with them. Because now I'm in the process of trying to restore healing, right? Yeah, yeah. I want to mend the relationship. So be transparent. And even if you fall and mess up, okay, baby, I messed up yesterday because, you know, I was vulnerable, but I'm still trying. I need you to help me. I need us to pray and ask God to help me. I'm going to counseling. I'm going to get whatever help I need so I can get rid of this situation and build our relationship. Amen. And listen, folks, you can't expect no miracles. You know, talk, you've been doing stuff this like five, ten years or longer. You don't, don't be expecting no miracle to happen instantly. Mm -hmm. That's right. Some people want it to happen instantly. Yeah. I'm going to give God just my sign. How long did it took you to get into this mess? <laughs> I know this is hard, but it's right, isn't it? Give your mate time. Healing takes time. There are a few instances in the Bible where a lot of times Jesus went and just laid hands on people and they were healed. But some of them took longer than that. Some of them were healed as they as they went, right? Some of them he went and had dialogue. He counseled them. He went to the woman at the well and sat down with her. Everybody else didn't want him to do it, but he risked his own reputation, his own life, and he sat down with that woman and had dialogue with her. But by the time he finished, she said, oh, you got to come and see this man. He told me. He helped me. Mm. Sometimes counseling is important. That's right. But don't ever esteem, esteem counseling above God. Right. You all hear me? All right, all right. We moving on. Yeah, so give him time to heal. And then be careful if you have a some kind of personality disorder because that exacerbates the problem. Get help with the counseling. Get help with that, with whatever personality disorder because some of the personality disorders can really cause you to struggle in the relationship. That's right, that's right, that's bipolar. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already 
somebody back there helping me out. <laughs> I got them on my list. But I, I won't, I, if you come and see me, I'll tell you what they are. But anyway, that's how, those are some issues, some ways that you can help yourself bring healing to the relationship. Daily show love and empathy. Don't take it for granted. Daily show love and empathy. Show that you understand. Show that, listen, I'm willing, if you're willing, I'm working with this. I'm working through this with you. You know, the one scripture talks about, 1 Corinthians talks about love suffers long. 1 Corinthians, what, the 13th chapter? Say, love suffers long. If you're in a relationship and you know you got a good person, a good partner, listen, you ought to be willing to suffer along with them until they get to a good place. Amen, amen. Sometimes, so I say sometimes, sometimes. We're not willing to suffer. We just want to jump ship as soon as we see a problem. That's right. Again, that's one of those personality disorders you probably got. <laughs> let's be patient and let's work together. Be willing. Listen, why, why are you going to train? This is crazy. Why are you going to turn in an 80 percenter for a 20? Wow. Yeah. Anybody heard that mm -hmm. phrase before? You got 80% of what you really needed in a mate, and they're fulfilling all of that, 80%. Uh -huh. And then that 20% is the only thing that's lacking, and you're going to turn that one away and go there and go, this is a, she's got the 20%. Now you got an 80% deficit. Mm -hmm. My Jesus. No. <laughs> he said, my Jesus. Listen, nobody's going to give you a total 100% all the time, but I think an 80% is a whole lot better than a 20 some of us are going to reach for the 20%. Jump ship out of the 80% into the 20% category. Mm -hmm. Not shame. Mm -hmm. So, uh, all right. So now for those of you that's really working on your relationships, yeah. preach it, preach it. Gary Chapman have, he called it the five love languages. Mm -hmm. I want you to focus on the five love languages with your mate. Some, some mates just like Words of affirmation. They like good compliments. As long as you telling them, oh, baby, I appreciate you. You love my life. I really enjoy your company. I thank you for whatever. Sometimes that's all a mate needs. But what if they need more than that? Sometimes they need more than that, don't they? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what you need. Just, just, just affirm me. Just say, oh, I like the way you play your saxophone. That's all I need. Is that all you need, brother? <laughs> but what about quality time some mates just want quality time I want you to be able to sit down with me give me a couple hours a week we can watch a movie we can sit down and laugh and talk together we can walk in the park I need quality time with you you don't have to always tell me how much you you know love me and all that I just need quality time that tells me that you love me and if that's what they mean give them that Take the time and give them that. Don't be doing what I did one time. I wanted to get me a bigger console television, and I made it look like it's what my wife wants. Yeah. Back in the day, Michael Jordan was playing his last game, and I'm going to go and looking sharp and at the best buy, looking at these big old console. And Brother Fred, I'll come home and tell baby, you know what? I, I know you like to watch TV and sports and all that. You like to watch different things, so I'm going to get us a big console. I'm going to bang the big old console up in the house. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, she like, you know, how much you paid? And I told her how much you were. Well, you know, I really didn't have to have nothing. That the little one, the one that we had was sufficient for me. But I'm doing what I really wanted and hoping she would adjust and say, yeah, baby. No, give her what she desired. And she hopefully will give me what I need, right? So call it the time. Words of affirmation. What about receiving gifts? Some of y'all just love it. Just buy me some jewelry. Or just buy me something. Just bring me something back. And I'm happy. Well, if that's what them, your spouse need, practice doing that. Amen. Don't talk about it. Yeah, they don't, you know, I know they like gifts, but I'm not doing it. I ain't getting no gifts. I just want to spend some time with them. They never don't want that. <laughs> Give them what they need. <laughs> then you wonder why they act in a certain kind of way. You didn't give them what they need. You give them what you like. <laughs> oh, Lord, help us today. Oh, Lord. They ought to like it. They ought to like it. They ought to like nothing. You decide y'all going to get mad. You can two going to become one. How they going to become one with you if every time you get what you want from them and never giving them what they need? I don't blame them. I'll be 
What about acts of service? Some people, brother Fred, just like acts of service. Listen, when you come home, you see I'm kind of strolling. Help me with the dishes. Help me clean the house. Or vacuum the floor. Do something. Acts of service. Do something to help me. Let me know that you care. Don't just go and prop up with the remote control. Hey, baby, huh? bring me some water. Hey, baby, would you bring me a piece of that pie out the refrigerator? No, I ain't bringing you no pie. Get up and get it yourself. <laughs> Sitting there, you know you could get up and help me. You just sitting there, sucking up the air. <laughs> I'm sorry, but acts of service is important to some people. That's what they want. Amen, amen. Preach the word. A lot of times I see guys, man, they I don't work all day. All they want to do is sit down and, and suck up the air and press the remote control. I want the wife to do everything. I'm like, how holds up is and here's another last one. Five. Physical touch. Some people like physical touch. Some people don't like physical touch. If your spouse don't like you to be touching on them and rubbing behind their neck, don't rub them behind their neck. Rub them somewhere else. <laughs> physical touch is important to some people. But some people, they don't want you to be touching them all the time. Listen, I had a problem with my wife and I. We first got married. My parents never showed displays of love out in the public. Displays of affection. They never showed that. So I struggled with that. We walking out and down the street, and she reaching to hold my hand. I'm like, oh. I struggled with that, sis. I'm honest. I struggled with that, walking in public, holding hands with her. She'll tell you. And I'd hold it for a minute, and I'd I figure out something. Oh, let me get this over here. <laughs> I figure out some kind of way to let go that hand, because that looked like it. Well, you know. But as I but as I dated and as we walked and as we were married and all of that, listen, I'm like, if that's what she like, okay, I'll hold your hand, baby. Come on. I put my arm around you. Mm -hmm. That's right. This, this is what she needs. I do that. She right. want a card on her anniversary and on Valentine's Day and birthdays. I'll do that. Because one time I didn't get cards. I didn't do a card. Right. I'm like, oh baby, I told you I love you, didn't you? Okay. She's sitting there looking all sad. What's the matter? <laughs> Give you a car, I'll give you a few dollars. Why aren't you happy? Right. Wow. <laughs> so I, I like cards. I like gifts of a, you know, gifts in there to buy me a card or something. You don't have to spend a lot of money, but just give me a card or something. That tells me that you're really in, you're connected. Well, I had to learn to give up some cards, brother Frey. So now I buy several cards. I have them in my bag. Yeah. <laughs> this is birthday coming over. What is it? No, the anniversary? Okay, this here it is. Let me put it up and write it up. So what am I saying in closing? Give the person, your partner, what they need, not what you want them to have. Give them what they need. And a lot of times it's not a whole lot. I'm low maintenance, brother. <laughs> he said, me too. Oh, your wife look like she you lift her head up. I don't know. <laughs> I'm low maintenance, man. And listen, the long older I get, I'm less maintenance. So she's glad to have me. <laughs> Well. <laughs> I'm glad I got a word too. Because listen, sometimes people can really, if say for example, if you have, you like receiving gifts. If your husband's not making that kind of money to buy you this expensive stuff, you need to kind of lower it down a little bit, bring the temperature down, say, well, baby, don't, you don't have to worry about that. I know I want that gold, whatever, necklace, but just get me a, a, a cheaper one. Work with them. Don't have them spending money that they don't have. Now all both of y'all getting kicked out of your house. Mm -hmm. Man, I wouldn't want to see you coming back to the house talking about they didn't pay their rent. <laughs> <laughs> so as you work together and you're praying and believing God through the relationship, God helps the marriage work. My wife and I started out day one, praying together for God to bless our marriage, that our marriage be one that others would want to emulate. And we did that daily, every day. If she was asleep, I'd walk over there by her bed before I go to work, and I'd lay hands and I'd pray for her. Let's not ever take for granted the power of prayer, the power of God in our relationship, folks. Let's not ever take that for granted. You can have the best person in the world, but if you neglect the spiritual part, guess what? It's just a matter of time. You can start having some friction, especially if you're supposed to be a Christian. Just a matter of time, you're going to start having friction. But let's invoke the power of prayer and we sit down spending quality time and talking to each other. 
communicating effectively, you know. Pick your time for communicating. Don't just push yourself on them. They're not ready to talk. They're tired or whatever. And all of a sudden, you try to make them, chase them down the aisle. You're going to hear me today. No, I don't have to hear you today. And maybe tomorrow. <laughs> Give them space, right? Because sometimes, somebody say sometimes. sometimes. Just like you're not ready to talk about something today, sometimes they're not ready to talk about it today either. Let's respect each other as adults and give them space. If they say, well, no, I don't want to talk about that right now, whatever. Okay, well, let's set another time. We'll come back together and we'll talk about it. But the bottom line is, we're all adults. We know we love God. Let's make our relationships work. And what's love got to do with it? Everything. 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 And we can show the love of God in our relationship. We loving God. We loving each other. The relationship's going to work 99.9% .9 of the time. That's my truth. And normally I kind of would have my wife to do it, but if we did it together, it would took us too long. As a matter of fact, I'm all ready over time anyway. But y'all got anything out of this? Does this help anybody? Because I'm telling you what, relationships are very important. We can spend time with our relationships. You know what? Our relationships will be a whole lot better. And God will be pleased. Because he's calling the church and the Christian relationships to be the one that's flourishing. Amen. Let's not neglect to take care of each other in our relationships. Amen. 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 God bless you. Elder James. Questions I want to ask you guys real quick before we get into the ready to our offer. So, so you know, ask you a few questions. If you were uh, trying to, you know, figure out how to be the best uh, when it comes to finances and working in the stock market and things like that, would you um, ask the guy that you meet at Walmart or would you rather ask like Warren Buffett? Who would you choose? I would hope Warren Buffett, right? Even though I'm not Warren Buffett, probably the top guy in finance, okay? Uh, if you want to know everything about technology and really want to move up in the area of technology, would you ask, you know, the guy at Geek Squad at Best Buy or Bill Gates? Bill Gates. Probably Bill Gates, right? I say that to say, at our church here, we have uh, pastors who have been married coming up on 45 years. 46 years. Sorry about that. There we go. 46 years. Uh, they raised kids. They raised a whole family. They've uh, had to travel and live uh, in multiple countries. Um, they've had to spend a lot of time apart, being that, um, you know, my dad was in the military. There's not too much in those 46 years, I think, that they have not dealt with from one area of another. Okay? So, when, um, you know, he comes up and he drops a lot of these tidbits, you know, sometimes comical, but you are truly getting great tips when it comes to relationships, comes to a marriage, when it comes to dating. You're getting great tips from somebody who knows what he's talking about and has years behind it. Okay? Not just that, uh, our pastors have counseled multiple um, couples throughout the last what, 20 plus years uh, in, in marriages and things like that. So I say when it comes to, you know, you all's relationships, marriages, things like that, and you're, you know, really trying to figure out how to make that work, okay, I personally can't think of anybody better than our pastors because they actually have the years behind them to show that, hey, we're not just talking it, they are actually doing it, all right? And it's quite obvious that, you know, um, since, you know, that's what the message was about, that that is important because we still know, all of us know people who've been divorced. Some of us here have probably been divorced before or, or, or you know, know people who've been divorced, I think it's still over 50%. The divorce rate. So obviously, it's needed. Obviously, a lot of people is not getting it right. So if you're trying to find the right answers, how can I make my relationship stronger? How can I keep it? How can I develop it? And, and so it can continue to grow. Like I said, you don't probably don't want to go to the guy at Best Buy when you have access to somebody who is probably the top-notch authority in this area, in my opinion. So we'll get past to another hand for the great tips. Great, awesome uh, marital tips and things like that. And as we get ready to get into our um, our offertory worship, 
I'll say this now for those who are online and those who are here, you know, you can all, always give at centerfaithchurch.com and our donate button where you can give your tithe, your offering, the sacrificial offering. Um, I as well, in what I do, occasionally um, have to counsel um, couples. All right? <laughs> I don't understand what's so funny because it's true. <laughs> Working on uh, what I do with, with uh, Hicks Financial Asset Wealth Management, I have to sit with couples and talk about their finances and help them, you know, come together and come with strategies and how to do it. And sometimes that can be tough because you may have one person who thinks this way, one person who thinks that way, and trying to bring them together is not always easy. All right, but in order for it to work. They have to be on the same page. Mm -hmm. yeah. very, and I think Pastor made that very clear that, hey, especially when we talked about, you know, the man being the head and, and how both have to submit, you have to be on the same page. And even um, one thing that I do when I sit with couples, I talk to them about what, even whether they go to church or not. I talk to them about tithing and giving into, into the kingdom of God because I let them know, hey, listen, this is a principle. It is a principle that works that allows your finances to be blessed Amen. when you give unto the kingdom of God. And it says it it's right there in the book. I didn't make it up. All right. So if you want your finances to be blessed, okay, you bless God. You know, and it goes with with it, give and it shall be given back to you. It's all connected. All right. You give unto the kingdom, he gives back to you. And then he not only does that, but he blesses the amount that you have so that you can do so much more with it. So, if we are trying to grow financially, let's make sure that we're giving into the kingdom, okay? Let's make sure that we're sowing seed into the ground so that seed can grow and become so much more than just a little seed, it can become a huge tree, amen? So, we're going to get ready to do our financial faith confession. If you need an uh, envelope, want to put your uh, giving into an envelope, please raise your hand. We'll make sure that you get that. I already gave you the website, so you know where to go to give online. Our financial faith confession, we'll read it together. It goes... My Heavenly Father, I now purpose in my heart to offer my financial gifts willingly, cheerfully, and generously as an act of my obedience in support of your kingdom. Your word assures me in various passages, including Deuteronomy 28, 1-14, Isaiah 1, 18-20, Luke 6, 37-38, and 2 Corinthians 9, 6-8 that your blessings in abundance shall be mine when I am consistently faithful and obedient to your commands, which include my generous gifts. I anticipate your provisions of wealth, wholeness, wisdom, and guidance as I consistently and cheerfully follow your plan for my life. I believe you will work and ask you to manifest yourself in my life as I am a doer of the word and not just a hearer. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.